is co-founder and CEO, Aleutian Taiwo. Hi, my name is Aleutian Taiwo, founder and CEO of Sinidian. We're building autonomous deployable factories and built entire aerospace products like aircraft and rockets the speed of software. everyone. Can you guys hear me? All right, excellent. Well, thank you TechCrunch for having us here. We're super stoked about this. My name is Olushan Taiwo. I'm the founder and CEO of Solidion. We are building tomorrow's factories today. If we look at my background here, I've had the immense pleasure at working some of the world's leading aerospace and defense companies, and I've devoted my entire career to figuring out how we can go from ideas to actual concepts that fly and make money. And what I found out is American manufacturing is actually in a really difficult and rough spot right now. These news articles, they're trying to tell you guys something. Manufacturing and reindustrializing America is difficult. And right now, we've just been spending a ton of time trying to figure out how we can actually restart factories that have been dead for a tons of years here. What we found at Solidion while we were creating this company is that 50% of our workforce is eligible for retirement over the next year. And we're trying to make advanced, amazing technology with tech that has been around since the Wright brothers. This doesn't scale, and we need to change as soon as possible. At Solidion, we're doing this, and we're changing this venture scale by taking off-the-shelf robots and pairing it with our software we call Elopium. Current manufacturing in the US, we do have automation technology that tries to help us you know, re redo and reindustrialize here, but you have to make dozens of these robots that do one singular thing, and that's a problem when you talk about trying to scale. On top of that, you have to have dozens to hundreds of engineers that actually go and reprogram these systems. Very, very expensive, especially when these people are actually leaving these factories. For our customers, they need all these robots to do things like metal fabrication, post-processing, assembly, and quality management. Once again, lots of expensive assets to go and do four things that actually could be done on one platform. We inject Elopium into these robotics to enable our customers to do this. At Solidion, we now, with our Elopium tech, we actually now let one robot do all four of these jobs here for less than the cost of a full-time engineer's salary. Big leaps forward. This is how our robots see the world, effectively taking in dozens of data points every second and making adjustments on the fly to make them autonomous. Big deals when we talk through data analytics and also ways to collect and make innovations from that. So we now go from factories that are very crowded that look like this to factories that are much more simpler, much more enabled. An example of this is a propulsion tank that we printed for a rocket company here. Um, that went fully autonomous. We had no one in the loop really to go and build this product. And you can kind of see it off stage here uh, in all her glory. Um, we're super proud about this. Many reasons for that. This product stands about six feet tall, weighs a little over 75 pounds. Uh, traditional manufacturing says it takes $100,000 to do this with fixed tooling and assets and four to six months to build this product. We did it for $10,000 and in six days. That's what we're excited about here at Solidion. But please do not take my word for it, because these are big numbers. This is Silicon Valley. How about we go to a live stream here uh, for our demo into our factory? We're actually based here in Berkeley, California. We've got robots uh, building a second version of this, which I'm super excited for. This one will actually get burst tested uh, and actually go through some, some testing for a customer. Um, what's really exciting about this process is the fact that we can build things that are about 10 feet in diameter by 10 feet tall. So pretty much your minivan and a little bit more than that. Um, we're also really excited the fact that you can see how many people do you guys see in the shot here? There's literally no one here except the guy uh, taking our video, um, and we're super excited about that. And so as we finish up some of the metal fabrication here, we actually have that robot on the slide there uh, that's able to go and do more scanning and get those data points that we like. Now, we're focused on taking this innovation in three distinct areas, in the aerospace, defense, and maritime industry. These are places that have generational lead times items for parts, and we need those innovations to change and do it today. And so. At Solidian, we are targeting the autonomous aerospace and defense markets. 
What's exciting about that is we have 500K in projected revenue for the end of the year this year, which is super exciting. A two-year-old startup should not have this traction, but that just tells you the state of American manufacturing. And as we scale from R&D contracts into actual production, we are looking at five million in projected revenue next year across those same customers plus a little more. Once again, big leaps forward from a small company. Our vision is to take manufacturing on this planet and be able to take the things that we've learned and take it to space eventually. This is how we actually get to being a multi-tiered, multi-planetary species. Rockets are cool, we need manufacturing to take us there. If you look at our team, this is the real proof point of our company beyond just the technology. These are the people that actually make the company work. Um, we're dreamers, we're innovators, we're builders, we're engineers. And what's super exciting about that is while we're VC-backed, we're blue collar. And that's what's the most exciting thing. We're not just tech bros that are building a product. We're people who have done this before in other industries and we're building to build it again. Now, previously we've raised $6 million from world-class investors that exist here in Silicon Valley. What I'm most excited to do today is to pronounce we're raising a $20 million seed round. Once again, big numbers from a small company, and I'm super excited that we have some of the best already backing us. At Solidian, we're not just keeping up with the future, we're redefining it and we're forging the path forward. So, join us in launching America into the next industrial revolution. I'm Olu, thank you for your time. Thank you, Solidian. Very yeah. nice looking jackets, by the way. Oh, um, judges. <laughs> Could you tell us about your customers and how, how do you integrate into their workflow? Yeah, definitely. So we use our factory in Berkeley uh, to be able to take initial products onto our robotics, show that we can actually qualify that system before they make any kind of capital purchase expenditure. And then once we show that it's a qualified process for building hardware, we copy and paste our software onto their existing robotics. And that's a big deal versus having to go buy a machine from us or us try to pitch guys like you and, and say that we're going to scale by you know, buying $100,000 or 100,000 square feet of real estate. That doesn't scale very well. And so we think there's a hybrid approach, and that's how we were working with our customers. Our customers, uh, specifically, they're in the defense and aerospace, so they are big primes. One of them, I don't know if you saw on the screen, is actually um, a... Uh, is one of the bigger primes, and so we're actually working with their innovation teams. They're one of our big values for revenue for this year. Um, so we're working with folks who are using us to start hitting into production, and then they go to our customers or in our and their suppliers who upload our software onto their robotics. So it's a, it's a tiered play of build the demand up top and then use the bottom people that have already been building their supply chain up uh, from our software. So. Hopefully that makes more sense, but happy to dive in deeper. So, the, so their suppliers don't have to invest in new equipment. They're taking your software and build, layering that on top of Precisely. what they already have. Okay. Yep. What level of uh, complexity can you handle today and kind of how you, do you view that kind of uh, progressing? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, a very good question. Right now we can build things bigger than your minivan um, and, and so maybe even twice as big as that tank. Um, and we have basic assembly capabilities. Where we will be in about a year is going from raw material to final product through the factory. We're sprinting towards that. And between that, there's some milestones that we have with our investors to be able to show that on smaller products, things like autonomous submarines and, and such like that. But you'll see some more news from us on that. And just a quick uh, clarity question. In terms of that cost reduction, is that primarily labor-based or is it also like materials or time? Uh, yeah, time, I guess. both, and I'm glad that you know that. Um, but basically, labor, we, have, we can actually have one engineer run three of these cells that we've just saw on our, on our um, live stream demo. So that's the first bit of that. The second bit of that is our raw materials, our input is actually welding wire, which is a very understood industry, right, um, that's existed for hundreds of years. And now you're able to take that into what we're doing for the metal fabrication. That's a huge cost reduction for us. Um, so it's a combination of using simple materials that are available on the market anywhere in the world that people already use um, and reducing the number of people that actually have to go and program robots to almost none at this point. We want a 14-year-old boy to basically be able to walk into a factory and build giant metal Lego blocks. Except not actually have a child <laughs> no, no, work no, in a factory. Not, no, yeah, yeah let us, <laughs> just we're not hiring 14-year-olds. So. <laughs> And what was the key technical unlock to make your software work across different robotic platforms and different arms? Yeah, yeah, uh, probably not the most Silicon Valley answer, but we were really unsatisfied when we started the company um, to find solutions that actually program industrial robotic arms. So we just did the work. 
Um, so it was a combination of raising money the first year of the business was painfully trying to figure out how to get that to work. Uh, companies such as Relativity and others, they've gone through this uh, path as well. They took other areas into it, but we really put a defined moment on, we're in the Bay Area, we're by some of the best software talent in the world, we need to use that to build this company. And that's what we did. And maybe walk us through, uh, you kind of touched on this a bit, walk us through the product roadmap uh, you know, over the coming years, particularly as it maps to the different verticals that you want to address. Yeah, definitely. So we do a lot of materials development that enables us to unlock the three verticals that we talked about. The way that we're going from it is, first of all, can we metal fabricate things? We've shown that proof of concept here. Assembly is the next biggest piece because that allows us to integrate into our customers' hardware. Um, and so what I'm hoping for is if I ever get a chance to come back to TechCrunch, uh, next time it's a fully integrated uh, rocket um, that you guys would be able to see. But things like that, or that's where the roadmap gets in towards. And so the company takes a dual path at that point, one in which um, we focus and hunker down on building the best software product that we possibly can. And the second piece of that is then taking what we know and actually start to apply it to products that are fully designed and built for this system and being able to work with our customers to commercialize that. It's a very lucrative way to scale the business over time. So to do that, um, you would then have your customers designing specifically for your production processes. So what is that? What do you need, what's, what do you need to build for them then? I'm glad you asked. And that's what's super exciting about what we're doing. Those data points that you saw on, on how we talked about the robots see the world, that's the data points that you need to be able to feed back into an AI to be able to tell you how to effectively design products. So we're already collecting this data. That's the whole point and why a software integration play is the smartest path for us as a manufacturing business. So you'll give them a new design software or you'll plug into what they already have? Yeah, we'll plug it. Well, it's a, it's a matter of both, right? It's taking those data points and being able to plug it into a design software that we build as suggestions. Um, but our customers can also take those design points as well, too. The data that they really care about is how do we get this to be a repeatable process? What we care about is how do we get this to be a repeatable process for new products and emerging tech lines so we can de-risk manufacturing. Do you benefit from, or are you indifferent to, improvements in the foundation model, rob robotics foundation models? Um, yeah. Uh, well, do you actually mind expanding on, on that piece? Yeah. So, you know, there's a number of teams, I think, right now that are building, you know, the foundational model for robotics, mm -hmm. uh, physical intelligence. There's a number of one of these that are in the news. And I'm wondering, is that something, is that model improvement something that you can benefit off of and build on top of? Or are you kind of adjacent to that in parallel to those improvements? We built a modular, flexible system to do just that. And that's, once again, I think that's our secret sauce on traction is we're not trying to overcomplicate it if we don't have to. Got it. Okay, give it up for Solidian. Well done.